Hello. In this video, we're going to prove the following theorem. The square root of two is irrational. Okay, now let's begin the proof. To start out, assume for a contradiction, we instead have that the square root of two is rational. What does it mean to be rational? It means that there is an integer p and a non-zero integer q such that the square root of two is equal to p over q. But it turns out this implies that there exists an integer p and a positive integer q, such that the square root of two is equal to p over q. The reason why is, well, since q is non-zero, we have that either q is positive or q is negative. If q is positive, then we're done. And if q is negative, well then, we know that the negative of q is positive, and we have that the square root of 2 is equal to the negative of p over the negative of q. So yeah, there is at least one integer and one positive integer, such that this is true. So really, this is also true as well. And on that note, we consider the following set. We let S be the set of all positive integers Q, such that the square root of two is equal to P over Q for some integer P. Well, based on what we have here, our set S is non-empty. So really, S is a non-empty subset of the positive integers. Now, it turns out every non-empty subset of the positive integers has a smallest element. And this is what we call the well-ordering principle. So we'll let t be the smallest element of s. Now, since t is the smallest element of s, of course, t is an element of s, which means if we take q here to be t, well, we have that t is a positive integer, and the square root of 2 is equal to p over t for some integer p. And then let's take this equation and square both sides. If we do that, we get 2 equals p squared over t squared. And then we can multiply t squared on both sides, and we get 2t squared equals p squared. And now, we see that p squared is equal to 2 times an integer. And that's what it means for p squared to be even. Next, it turns out, given any integer a, if a squared is even, then a is even. So, since p squared is even, we have that p is even. What does it mean for p to be even? It means that there is some integer j such that p is equal to 2j. And then, since 2t squared is equal to p squared, let's take p and substitute it for 2j. If we do that, we're going to get 2t squared is equal to 4j squared. And then, Dividing 2 on both sides, we get t squared equals 2j squared. So then we see that t squared is equal to 2 times an integer. And that's what it means for t squared to be even. But again, this implies that t is even. And what does it mean for t to be even? It means that there is some integer k such that t is equal to 2k. And now, since t is a positive integer, we must have that k is also a positive integer. The reason why is because, well, there are three possibilities. Either k is positive, k is negative, or k is zero. What happens if k is zero? Well, then we have two times zero, which is zero, but we know that t is positive, so that's a contradiction. On the other hand, if k is negative, well, then we have two times a negative number, which results in a negative number. 
But again, that contradicts the fact that T is positive. So yeah, the only possibility we're left with is that K is positive. Now, let's go back to this equation. We know that the square root of 2 is equal to P over T. And since P is equal to 2J, we can substitute the P here for 2J. Similarly, since T is equal to 2K, we can substitute the T here for 2K. And then we see that the 2's cancel out, so we're left with J over K. So the square root of 2 is equal to J over K. But now we have that K satisfies all the requirements to be an element of S. The reason why is because if we take Q to be K and P to be J, well, yeah, K is a positive integer. That's what we have here. And the square root of 2 is equal to J over K. That's what we have here. But then, since T is the smallest element of S, this means that T is less than or equal to every element of S. So in particular, since K is an element of S, we must have that T is less than or equal to K. But T is equal to 2K, so we can substitute the T here for 2K. And then, since K is positive, we can divide K on both sides of this inequality, and the sign of the inequality will remain the same. And we get that 2 is less than or equal to 1. But we know that 2 is greater than 1, so we've reached a contradiction. Our assumption that the square root of 2 is rational leads to a contradiction, so we must instead have that the square root of 2 is irrational. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.